There's several factors that you want to consider in order to create a successful headshot. You want to make sure that you've got an authentic connection. You also want to have beautiful lighting and you want to make sure that you've got the right background to complement the portrait. Wardrobe, styling and makeup are also important to bring out the best features of your model. Post-production is going to add that final polish to your image. And one thing that's often overlooked that is just as important as all these factors is the framing in camera of the headshot. Small shifts in framing can either positively or negatively influence how your model's perceived. So the framing or where you position your model in the frame should never be an accident. I can remember when I first started shooting headshots, I was so busy working out my exposure and trying to get the image sharp that I really gave the composition any consideration at all. So as a general rule, most beginners will frame their portraits so the model is dead center of the frame. And the reason for this is because the default focus setting on the camera is in the center of the frame. By making a few minor adjustments to how you frame your headshots, you can make a dramatic improvement. The reason composition is so important is because it can be more flattering to your model, less jarring for the viewer and make your model appear more powerful or softer. Whenever I'm framing up my headshots, there are a few factors that I take into consideration. Firstly, I always make sure that I give myself options. And by this, I mean that even if I want my final crop to be tight and cropping into the head, I always leave room above the head because you can always crop in, but you can't add that extra headroom and you don't know what the future uses for that image are. So what I like to do is always leave space above the head. I try and position my portrait, frame it up in camera so that the eyes sit in the top half of the frame and where possible in the top third of the frame. I find that this gives me a far more dynamic looking image. The other thing I like to do to give myself more options for future use is I like to frame my headshots in a horizontal rather than a vertical format. The reason for this is when you shoot in a horizontal format, you can always crop back in to a vertical format. But if you start with a vertical format, you can't add any extra space or you have to do a lot of work in Photoshop to be able to do this. Now, the advantage of the horizontal format is it does tend to sit better on social media so you can fill the frame. The other advantage of the horizontal format is it gives you some negative space in the image. And this helps with the overall flow of the image. And it also gives you further options to place text in your image. And you see this used a lot in advertising where you'll see uh, text placed in an image and often you can direct the subject's eyes to either look left or right uh, towards the text that's on the page. And what happens is when you look at an image, the first place you'll look at are the person's eyes. And then it's a natural instinct to follow where the eyes are looking. So if you look online and uh, have a look at uh, advertising, generally you'll find that this is a technique that's often used. Now, when I'm framing up a horizontal image, 
I try and frame up so that my subject sits a third of the way in, either to the left or to the right of the frame. So let's now have a look at some other examples of framing and what it does to the overall look and feel of the image. So you can see here where we place our model in the frame really has uh, an important role in the look and feel of the image. Placing the model too close to the edge of frame creates tension. Placing the model in the center of the frame stops the flow. Where you crop uh, closely under the chin or closely above also creates tension. So you want to try and make sure that there's a nice flow. And here I've exaggerated it, but this can even be uh, an interesting technique if you want to uh, use a particular portrait to direct attention to some text. You can use the eyes and the flow of the eyes to direct the viewer's attention anywhere you want. Have a look at how having that extra space under the chin just changes the whole flow and placing that model a third of the way in just makes it more comfortable. Dropping the angle of the camera can also make your model appear more heroic. So I've just lowered the camera. He now towers over the camera and he does look heroic, more powerful, more convincing. Have a look what happens when I shoot down on the model. It suddenly diminishes him. It makes him look smaller, somewhat softer. So the angle of the camera is also going to influence how your model is perceived.